Dr. Alburo is a prolific Cebuano language scholar. She served as the director of the Cebuano Study Center from 1996 to 2011. She is also a professor at the University of San Carlos with numerous research on Cebuano heritage and culture, Philippine and Cebuano literature, folklore and expressive culture, and popular culture. She is also an active member of WILA, Women in Literary Arts, and writes poetry in English and Cebuano. To name only a few, she is the recipient of the Achievement Award from the National Research Council of the Philippines. This year, she was awarded one of the top 15 literary writers in Cebuano after the war by the Batalad Subbo Incorporated. Here is Dr. Linda Quintanar Alboro. I was exposed very early to Cebuano literature when I was still I think mga eight years old. Uh, my neighbor subscribed to Bisaya magazine, and she always passed them on to me. Pero Philippine literature, no, not until college. Oh, okay. uh, I had um, some of my teachers were writers, like Franz Arceliana, Alejandrino Hufana, and Recarido. Limitilio. Sure. But you know, my, my father uh, <laughs> didn't want me to read Bisaya because he was an English teacher. And I would steal the magazines and hide in the closet with a flashlight and read there. Mm -hmm. uh, when I was uh, working with Resil Mujeres at the Samuano Study Center, mm -hmm. it was in 1975. Okay. Yeah. But before that, I didn't have any... Uh, I, I, I didn't see the need to do research in Cebuano studies, but he assigned me to, to look for some folk tales that we could uh, collect and publish. So I did just that. I looked for folk tales in various sources and then translated them. And that was the first project in Cebuano they did. And uh, in 1975, the same year that I started uh, my research, I, I left uh, for my doctoral studies at Silliman University. And after three years, I finished my coursework. And, uh, uh, but during summer, I would come back to Cebu and do more research. But when I, I got to finish my doctoral studies, I did my dissertation on uh, the Cebuano pre-war novel. Mm -hmm. And you know, it was difficult because no one there knew Cebuano, like the tiempos. And <laughs> my advisor was an American, so it took me eight years mm -hmm. to write. <laughs> mm, I'm sorry, none. Yeah, because I was into Cebuano literature and there was no model that I could think of, especially women. Uh, Cebuano literature is a very macho uh, literature. Mm -hmm. There were very few uh, writers like Maria Cabigon, mm -hmm. no? And I, I didn't really idolize her. Mm -hmm. But I did research on uh, uh, an early feminist writer, Gardio Patra Quijano, and I was, uh, I think, instrumental in giving her the first for Cebuano regional literature award from the CCP. 1994, I think, and uh, the male writer said, why her? <laughs> so, well, nobody, nobody researched on the males. Well, actually, I didn't write at all uh, uh, before 1991, okay. so I can't, I can't say, but uh, in 19... Late, in the late 80s, there was this feminist movement, and I was part of the Women's Studies Association. And, uh, and so in, in papers, I would do research in uh, women's literature, and that's, uh, that really started me off. So in 1991, when a group of women writers in Cebu invited me to be advisor of their writers' group, the WILA, Women in Literary Arts, I said, uh, how do I advise you? I, mean, I don't even write myself. So I said, I'll just be a member. But they said, to be a member, you have to publish. So that's when I really started writing, 1991. I was uh, about 45 years, very late. Words. Women. <laughs> it's in this book, Sinugang. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I think the, the best known poem that I have, uh, Patay na Tuds, Maria Clara has been anthologized, well, uh, even in, yeah, in, in Manila textbooks. Uh, I mentioned the Women Literary Arts, so this was founded in 1991. And uh, I also mentioned in our informal conversation with Rasil and Vim earlier that uh, 
I was asked again to be advisor of a male writers group and I, I declined, of course not, how can I, no? all male writers group. But I, I did attend their convention and they had a workshop and after that um, I, I decided to, to go around with my women friends and, and so they said, Sige, let's form and I became a member. And I started writing um, for our anthologies, a yearly anthologies and every month we had a poetry reading. And, and so uh, it, it kind of um, forced, forced me to write. Hope uh, you uh, calls, calls my poetry airport poetry <laughs> because I would go to Manila for these NCCA meetings every month and then, and, and then I would realize, hi, when I, when I reach here at four o'clock, we have a poetry reading. So I have to uh, give something new because that's part of the rule. You have to read your own poem that's not been published before. So I wrote it uh, at the airport while waiting for the for the flight, so airport poetry. But yeah, um, so it was hurriedly written, but before publication, I, I would have the chance to revise. Okay, another group that I have been involved in is the Bathalad, the Bathalad uh, All Male Writers Group. So I mentioned that uh, they asked me uh, to be the advisor, and I said no, and then they asked me to um, panel in their, in their workshops, and I would help them, because I was director of the center, I would help them in their book launchings and uh, in their conferences, which was, which was yearly, I'd give um, papers like, the last one I think was on the vocabulary of literary criticism in Cebuano. Yeah, uh, there's another group, the Ludabi, which is uh, even earlier than Batala, this is Lubas, uh, uh, Ludabi, sa Dagang Lubas, sa Dagang Bisaya, no? the core of, uh, of Visayan writing. This is the biggest uh, writers group in Cebuano. It has chapters all over the world. And uh, uh, many of the writers there formed another group, and that was the Batalad, no? because they had become more than a writers group. They were politicized also. They would uh, ask donations for prizes from politicians. And, uh, but some of them formed Academia Bisaya, and I was invited to join them, so I would also uh, take part in their the meetings. We uh, sought to standardize orthography in Cebuano, and we came up with some dictionaries. And another group that uh, I was involved in, I, I also helped uh, organize, it's called the Creative Cebu Council, 1995, I think. This was, uh, this was a group of various artists, and I was representing the literary sector. So we had book launchings. My Bisayang Daku was, was launched by Creative Cebu Council. And interesting thing is that we had several writers too and performers from Southeast Asia. There are certain creative cities, so-called creative cities in Southeast Asia. And we came here, I think twice, for, for an assembly. But you know, I don't know what happened. Uh, one of them went for a scholarship abroad. Another uh, got married and, and left the group. And so it, it, it's practically dead. <laughs> I think that's, that's all, the writer's group. The, the young writers, of course, uh, are there, like uh, the Tinta of uh, UP, and another is in, I don't know their name, in Cebu Normal, and another in San Carlos. Uh, I'm, I'm not really, uh, because they are groups of young, young people, but they would ask me sometimes to, to give papers on creative writing and things like that. Before, I mean, <laughs> I have I've stopped writing family, but you, you can never escape it because you're a woman, no? And uh, I started writing about uh, gender, you know, stereotypes. I have poems about about uh, women, uh, girls who are uh, not allowed to play while well, the boys do, and uh, how how privileged the 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 sons are. I have a kind of Cebuano Balitao thing there. And Patay na Tuts Maria Clara, of course, is there. And lately, one of my uh, recent poems about, um, I review the maybe 10 or, or 7 to 10 um, short stories in English by Filipinos. And where, where the central character is a woman, and I write poems where they, they have the voice. For example, <coughs> um, the Mar Maria <laughs> in How My Brother Ryan brought him a wife. I give her a voice, and then uh, 
Julia was it in Dead Stars and uh, Amada in Tantarin and uh, Eli in uh, to, uh, NVM Gonzalez, uh, what is the name of her? A Warm Hand and maybe three or four more. Yeah, this will come out in our uh, recent, in, in our book, um, our three, the original Sinuga, because the first Sinuga is this one, but this was in 1990, 1990, I think. So these three, Esther Tapia, myself, and Cora, women writers, we represent three generations. I'm the oldest, and then uh, Esther is in between, and Cora is uh, the youngest. We are going to uh, publish another collection, the three of us. And so these women's stories are there. When I joined the Women Write uh, really formally and published, but before that, uh, of course, uh, I, I would write for my own diaries and your stories sometimes. Um, a cousin of mine, Pura Gintanar, who is also, who's also a WILA member, uh, died uh, maybe five years ago. Um, I collaborated on a novel. We were only grade six <laughs> in English, but I, I don't think it was never finished though. This is probably the, the earliest uh, uh, that I could say I, I wrote creative, but, but really formally, it's only in 1991 when I joined. Uh, but uh, I remember I was taking creative writing under uh, Renato Madrid or our father, Father Villanueva. They wrote a story, one story about uh, my old uh, grand aunt, its name, the name is Indai Lule, and it was published in Sons and Coral when I went there to, uh, to to study, no? And that was my first published uh, and the only short story in English that I have written. The others are in Cebuano. Cebuano. Well, there are, there are already many writers in, in, in English. Even among, among the women writers, they, most of them uh, write in English, but uh, I think I must have influenced some of them. They have started writing in Cebuano. Also, uh, this, is it here, a Centering Voices? One of the books here. Anyway, I don't know if it's there. This is the first anthology of Willa, and I edited it. There were all, uh, there were very few uh, poems in Cebuano, but all the stories were in English. So I said, it, this is not good, no? So I was kind of forced to write a Cebuano short story. really very varied. Uh, I have a, a concrete poem that's, that, that I'm going to read later. It's called The uh, Woman Facing the Mirror, of course, it's translation. And it was, uh, that's the only concrete poem that I have. Um, the others are well structured, no? I use rhyme and rhythm and the stanza form, mostly uh, quatrains, but uh, actually in, in content, no, uh, they're all, Everything. I have a set of love poems. I have uh, the environment. I have uh, poems on the OFWs and uh, people abroad, uh, Filipinos, Cebuanos abroad, and uh, brain drain and what else? Uh, nostalgia pieces. A lot of them, no, uh, full of local color. A uh, genre, of course, poetry. But I have I have written a few stories too. I think poetry is more challenging. Even if they say many say, uh, you know, you need more time for a short story. But once you write a story, it just flows. But in poetry, you have to go back to it again and again. In fact, every time I read a poem of mine, I want to change a word or two. Even until now, it's published already. Said I should have used this word, you know. So it's never finished. So poetry for me. Uh, uh, because of uh, you have to look for the exact word that will fit it, especially in my case because I use rhythm and rhyme, yeah, and therefore you need to know your vocabulary. Well, uh, it, it started the assignment in 1975 when he asked me to collect folk tales. I had to translate them, and later the folk folklore series you have folk songs and. Uh, folk songs also and the, the proverbs proverbs and uh, the riddles so that was my first uh, translation work and then when Toyota Foundation uh, gave us a grant for the series of literary uh, anthologies we have two books in Cebuano poetry two, two volumes 
two volumes in Cebuano uh, fiction. It's there somewhere. And then one in drama. And uh, I think it covers it, no? I had to translate some of them. Not all, because there, we had a team. Versil Mojares, Butch Vandilio, uh, Jun Dum Dum, and uh, who's the other one? Oh, my, I forgot. Jun Dum Dum, Butch Vandilio. I forgot. It's here. And Russell Harris, how can I forget? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, after that, <clears throat> the 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 Wheela anthologies also needed translation. So I did. Well, if it was not my poem, uh, they would show it to me, no, and uh, and so I would, I would revise, I would edit. And my latest work in translation is a novel in Cebuano on Lapu-Lapu, The Conqueror of Magellan. It was written in 1930s by uh, one of our public figures, Vicente Pigulias, the uh, founder of University of the Visayas. No? He, wrote, he wrote this um, Lapu-Lapu. And uh, I also have th theorized on literary translations. I have presented papers and uh, one of them was published by St. Jerome's Press in the UK. This, this press is, uh, is a specializes in literary translation alone, yeah. And uh, of course, that, that needs, um, I think my, my work also in uh, dictionaries uh, helped. I have two dictionaries. Uh, actually, I, I have only two books to my name that's only mine. No? One is a literary biography of uh, this under-recognized uh, writer in English, Greg Mercado. He, he has been recognized by Seguir Sevilla in his, he had his annual list of uh, writers. And that, that is one. And the other one is, oh, I have three. I have, I have three books. Uh, that's not a collection or edited. Uh, the first one is the literary biography by USC Press, and then another is uh, another is Bisayang Dako, which is uh, writing Cebuano arts and culture. It's a collection of the uh, columns that I, I wrote for two magazines here, uh, Freeman Magazine and uh, Subbu News. And then uh, the third one is actually not in literature, but it is on uh, essays on the revolution in Cebu because I'm also into history. And uh, this is published by La Salle University. Well, I'm writing. Well, I can write anywhere. Like I said a point in, in airports. Oh. And, um, well, I mean, there's no there's constant, uh, or I don't, I don't uh, look for any specific place, or I don't drink coffee all the time, or smoke, or eat, or what. So it, it, there's no habit, no, that uh, accompanies my my writing, <laughs> because I write when needed, <laughs> or sometimes well, my my friends say, uh, le let's have this uh, collection, this the, the sinog ang thing. So okay, I'll write one poem a day, so I, I do that. But uh, what time? Uh, it, it's not the same. Sometimes I just wake up, you know, at night, 12 o'clock, or else very, very early in the morning, no one is uh, awake, four, five. But even uh, at noon time, even when the TV is on, uh, I can do it if, if it's needed. No? no, no ritual. The only ritual I uh, observe is the ritual of the imagination. <laughs> Oh, sometimes I get inspired by uh, the newspaper, no? Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm in touch with uh, contemporary events and I want to comment on them through a poem, I do that. Not, not so much from literary sources. When something happens to the family, like somebody died or, or uh, a house is destroyed or, you know, fire in our neighborhood, uh, I can write on it. So something triggers <laughs> You want to comment on it, no? Like one, one time, uh, our dog was uh, run over by a neighbor's car, and it uh, was so sad, so I wrote a poem about it. <laughs> uh, normally, 
Well, it depends on, on the piece because they don't have uh, the same structure. They don't have the same. I don't really have a particular thing. I look at it uh, like what genre is this? If this is, for example, flash fiction, then you have certain expectations. If it is a narrative poem, then you also look for the chronology. So it depends on what, what it is no? but, uh, in workshops. Um, of course, I look for grammar, first of all, that it's clean and smooth to read. And then after that, then, uh, you know, the figurative language, whether it is a statement, an image, or what. All the genres even have creative nonfiction, you have flash fiction recently, poetry, drama, and sometimes they're mixed, man. In, in one workshop, they mix the genres. Even have film scripts sometimes. Uh, I've, I've stopped the, the, the writer's workshop that I uh, coordinated for uh, maybe 20 years. Stopped already. So uh, this is, I'm, I'm a regular panelist at the Iligan Writer's Workshop. And uh, sometimes in the um, school workshops, where you have uh, under, undergrads starting to write. Just recently, you had a workshop on... Ah, Paglambo, uh -huh. yeah, It was on flash fiction. And we had participants from uh, as far as Iligan, Makolo, Dumaguete, and even Iloilo. And the one in Iloilo uh, had a hard time because uh, she couldn't understand Cebuano. No? But, but she could, you know, get the, the gist. And we didn't include translations. My childhood, how do I describe it? Well, I, I am a rural girl. I grew up in Argao, which is a town 66 kilometers away. But uh, I was moved to the city when my father uh, got a job here. So I came with him and I was uh, even grade three and grade four. I was here, but I had to go back to my mother because of my asthma. And, uh, but when I was in high school, I came back here again. So it's a bit rural and then both city and, and rural. But I grew up, uh, I had a lot of cousins who would, we played together. And uh, I have a nostalgic piece on that. It's called the Pierce Argo, where, where we had our games. We would uh, swim together and we, in fact, we would stay in the sea the whole day from morning to afternoon and our yaya would just bring our food <laughs> there's the beach so it got very very dark and, and they started uh, singing no uh, negrita from the mountain what kind of food do you eat referring to me <laughs> so uh, I had four four sisters but I was the eldest so they were young do they also write no, I'm the only one. It's in the family, no one. But my father was a writer, mm -hmm. and my daughter also writes. Mm -hmm. So you took uh, your education in UP? UP, then San Carlos for MA, and Siliman for, for doc doctoral. How has that shaped your, your writings? Oh, yeah, okay. Um, I see myself, no? In relation to literature, as uh, I have three roles. As teacher, which I think I learned from UP because uh, my model teacher, Chinda de Falsa, was very good. And then when I came to, to San Carlos for my MA, my, of course my model was Russell Mujeres, no? so as researcher. And then I went to Siliman as writer, naman, my development there as writer. So teacher, researcher, and writer. I go there every almost every week. Do you write about? Do you have pieces about? Oh, of course. My short stories are all about Argao, and uh, poems, essays, and I edited uh, a history book on on Argao. The writer was a Swiss, so I had to do uh, you know fix a lot and 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 uh, you know talk talk to him about it. It was really strange. Uh, somebody writing a history of Argo is <laughs> a Swiss person. Yeah. Uh, there's a recently published um, series of 
books on the histories of the uh, Okay, my husband was manager of that and uh, I was editor of Six Towns. Uh, which towns did you? Uh, I, I, I was not... Uh, I was in a position to select, no? I mean, there's a committee, history committee like uh, Magpale and others, uh, even even Gwen before, no? Um, I had the north. I had the Camotes Islands, no? That's uh, Poro, Pilar, uh, what's the other one there? Poro, Pilar, Tu... I don't remember the other one, the third. And then Mandawe, Consolacion, Pulapu, let's see it, Liloan, yeah. I did not write, no, but I, I, I was editor of, of this, which, which means I had to tell a writer, this lacks this and that, no, you better do more research on it. But you know, for Poro, the writer disappeared, oh. Jad Conde. So I had to write. Disappeared? Just disappeared. I, I asked his, <clears throat> his grandmother, because he was living with a grandmother, where, where he was, and he said, I don't know. I think he has returned, but uh, the book is finished, no? <laughs> but I used another name because the editor is my name and then the, the writer's name is another name. I used uh, the name Maria, Maria uh, Luisa Reyes for some of my, my works published in the Freeman Magazine and the Sunstar Magazine. Maria Cristina, Cristina, Cristina Reyes. But I've stopped using it. Uh, sure, because because of uh, a lot of my research uh, has not been um, organized and uh, published. For example, uh, 15 years ago, I started a survey of Samoano literature, but now it has to be updated. No, we use it in our classes. It's in computer printout, so it's in the center. Everybody can can read it, but it it still needs fleshing out, especially contemporary part. That's one. That's one. And then some, some of the women writers also, I think, need to be uh, introduced. Uh, writers in all the past and even of the present, uh, after the war, but not recent. No? But uh, I think Hope has done uh, some of them, like Lena Moore. Um, I don't know if he has included Australia Alphon, because I have some short stories by Alfred, uh, Australia Alphon that uh, have not been written about because they're in Cebuano and she used another name and when I went to the Visaya, uh, their office at Pasong Tamo, I had to uh, copy word for word the short stories that that still needs uh, was this? Was this? oh mm, I don't know uh, 10 years ago maybe so I just put that on the shelf <laughs> Looking for sources, no, and the, the, the methodology, methodology actually is dictated by what what is there. So, like you don't you don't think of uh, an approach before you look for the sources. You have the source. What do you find here? Do you have a, a possible uh, gynocritical uh, study here, or Marxist, depending on on the materials, or uh, are these materials good for? one kind of genre that you can study, like the detective fiction that, that I wrote about. Yes, read and read, write and write, and bond with other writers. And that's what I always tell them, to always uh, be updated with you know, what's currently out there, so you won't get you know, fall behind and uh, I think that's it. You have you have to practice uh, a, a lot, and maybe you have to to know what is there already the tradition, so that before you can work on the tradition and not fall fall back to a, an outdated style, for example, and do experiment. Oh, uh, some of them were my. My students and most of them were in 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 the workshops. 
my favorite is Adonis Lorado, of course, and uh, I was a judge in the author Writer's Prize, NCCA, and uh, he won there, but that's the only one, of course. Everybody also said he's good, no? Mike Obineta was second, so he's another one who was in my class. And even Butch Bandilio was, but he's not really up and coming, he has come already. I mean, he, has, he is, uh, what is he now? He's a, uh, consul, he's a consul in Bangladesh. So he has arrived, but uh, even I think Adonis has arrived already, has won several prizes. Mike Obineta uh, runs uh, an online uh, literary page, you know, uh, what is it called? Bis B Binis. Something with Bisaya in it. And uh, for the women, uh, you have Cora Almerino, who is already in uh, Los Angeles, but uh, she, 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 she has entries in Palanca and NCCA Writer's Prize, so she's still updated and she's part of my new book, The Three of Us, Cora Almerino, and I think uh, there's somebody very good in, she's now the, the chair of WILA, Gigi Borlasa, she teaches at uh, UP, and Charles in English, of course. Yeah, you have, maybe your taste will differ if you're young or if you're old. And when you are older, like I did at uh, 45, I started 45, I had more things to say, no? and uh, many, many, many angles uh, from which to look at a certain topic, compared with uh, young ones who are just, uh, you know, enjoying life. Well, mm -hmm. <laughs> No, not, not, no specific advice, even for letters. But uh, to all writers, they should just read and read and, and uh, don't stop writing. Mm. I, I said no, there, there, were, there are three, three rules that I, I take in relation to literature, teacher, researcher, and writer. So as teacher, well, my contributions have been uh, recognized. For example, I had the Gawad, Park, Mar Gawad Pas Marquez Benitez Award for Literature Teaching uh, three years ago. And uh, these three, I think, are not separate because my research feeds into my teaching as well into my writing. No? And when I research, I discover more about what the writers swear and so you can improve on them or uh, resurrect them and disseminate you know, this, uh, this research to other writers who might be inspired by, by the examples. And then uh, for, for research, I was also awarded an uh, achievement award in the National Research Council of the Philippines. And as writer, <laughs> so for each three, I had, I've had awards. Like as writer, um, I got an award from the NCCA in the first Tabuan uh, Literary Festival. I don't even remember the date. Maybe two thousand one or something. And my 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 uh, poems were exhibited at the uh, Library of Congress during the uh, uh, Women's Poetry World Festival, something like that, uh, in Washington. And uh, I have never never uh, joined a contest. <laughs> I'm I'm not into it, man. So I mean, what what I want to prove, no? So I just write. But you organize them. Oh yeah, uh, and uh, I said also, if I join Palanco, well, uh, they're likely to ask me to judge, uh, as well as the Writers Press. We also, <laughs> so I've I've been uh, judging the left and right. So how can I enter, no? I mean, uh, wouldn't it be embarrassing <laughs> if I join. I don't win anything. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm scared of that too. Yeah. <laughs> it's enough that my friends, it's just my friends, tell me, oh, very nice, you know. Mm -hmm. But Rasil Moharis, for example, has commented on uh, my craft. And uh, <clears throat> my, my friends, uh, Sir Tapia and Cora, well, they're my friends, so they cannot say anything negative against me, no? But, but they like my, what they call authentic Cebuano and the lyrical, lyrical tone. And uh, Christine Ortega, uh, who uh, was with uh, the NCCA Literary Arts Committee, I wrote the introduction to Duhawit, and he said, uh, clear eyed, he's like distinct voice, mga ingon anak bitaw. <laughs> How do you create that like, distinct voice, that authentic Cebuano voice? How? I mean, I just, I just say. 
I just in my in my real voice that my my friends say that's really Linda. You know, it's like when you're reading a poem and you're listening to her voice. Although I experimented sometimes, I have experimented with uh, writing um, from a male's uh, point of view. How did that work? Out? Yeah, it's somewhere there in the in the work, and the, uh, I've tried that only once. <laughs> Never tried it again. Well, because literature is still there and it's evolving, there is a need to update all of these researches. Update meaning contemporary writers, but even the past writers, there's still a lot that's, uh, that has to be unearthed. No? And uh, maybe using more contemporary uh, theories. Like, uh, I've been thinking of, aside from the updating of the survey of literature, my own dissertation just on pre war Samuano. One novel, I studied about 28 novels, um, different genres. No, uh, I think I, I will revise that and to 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 include some uh, more contemporary literary theory as a framework, because I only did sociological. Nineteen ninety-seven to two thousand eleven, when I when I retired, uh, you can count <laughs> how many them <laughs> to nineteen ninety-seven. So two thousand seven is ten, two thousand uh, fifteen, something like, yeah, more or less. But of course, I had I had been with the center as assistant and associate of Dr. Mohares for fifteen years too. You know, I've been teaching literature since 1965 and I haven't stopped. I'm still teaching. Uh, I'm now with a, a special program with USC. I'm retired now, but I'm with a special program. It's called the Subwano Heritage Studies. Uh, <laughs> Bia is coordinating that program. And uh, to my surprise, uh, Dr. Yu uh, arranged it for, my, for me to teach something that I never taught together with literature. And he said, literary and performing arts, which means I have to to research into dance and music. Though I have done something, but not, <laughs> not to teach. I think that's interesting, so I have something to do. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, I, I think even if the Faiga workshop is not there anymore, uh, Hope sees to it that there is some kind of workshop together with the department going on, at least for the, the students of San Carlos, per se. There are other workshops of the literary groups that uh, the center can coordinate with. Well, everybody is excited about Rasil Mohars' uh, winning of, of the national artist. But I, I cannot tell uh, how it has really impacted, like how they would like to be national artists too, or uh, they would they are inspired. I think they are inspired and are, are you know proud of the fact that there is a Samoano among among us that has reached that stature. Yeah, and well, it's I think it's even late in coming. You know, <laughs> he should have gotten it uh, a bit earlier, but he refused. He refused the nomination three times before. Well, the thing about Rasil Muharis is he's so like uh, not just focused on one, but he sees you know the webs, you know, relationships. So you can tell any time you know anything that comes out of his mouth, you better listen to, because it's it's uh, important. You know what uh, his observations are on Philippine literature in general, like for example the need for cross regional studies and the need for dialogue among the different writers and maybe uh, find special niches and not compete with other centers that workshops, for example, are, are the same, whether they're in Iligan or Manila. So like Siliman having only English. Hmm. What else? Uh, yeah, I've been waiting for him to start or finish a novel um, on the cholera epidemic of Cebu in 1908, was it? Yeah, when he was still not really very busy, he used to talk about it before and until now I don't know how he has progressed.
maybe not because uh, as national artist, you know, he's invited here and there. Mm -hmm. So he even has this time <laughs> to do it. The, the, the province of Cebu has uh, already honored him, uh, recognized him with a, uh, uh, you know, one, one night, no, uh, celebrating. And the city of Cebu is going to do that soon. I'm, I'm in the uh, Historical and Cultural Affairs Commission and we are uh, planning on it. Well, the future, uh, well, there is a future as long as the writers are there and the young writers are there. And in fact, uh, I have observed that they are in a hurry, in a hurry to get published, um, you know, even they self-publish. They are, uh, they're, they're always there attending uh, poetry readings and uh, they're hungry for workshops and, and recognitions. So it's good, no? And... Uh, I think also the three, they, they know each other now. Now there are workshops which bring them together. Although uh, not uh, really uh, very ideal, but uh, they're, they're, well, we're getting there. Um, the center uh, ha had uh, sponsored a, a workshop in, mm, I don't remember. <laughs> These dates are maybe 2000 or 1999. A, a workshop specifically on traditional forms in the Visayas and yeah and adapting them so we had three groups like I think 10 from uh, Hiligaynon writers 10 from Warai and 10 from here and then we had one form to present and uh, you know uh, the Sabuanos had, had uh, Balita of course and uh, the, the, the fellows uh, contemporize the Cebuano Balita by using contemporary themes, no? And the Ligaynon had the uh, Dayao, which is praise, poetry, and the Warais had, what did they have? It was a mix. It was really a mix of, uh, you know, they even danced, no? Their poetry. And it was very, uh, just a lot of fun. <laughs> I wrote about it, but only for the Visayan part, uh, for the Cebuano part. But I think the center has those Manuscripts. Manuscripts. Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, I think we have a bigger yeah, part a now of the, NCLA. of the pie because uh, there are fewer writers, I guess, in Pangasinan, for example. My mother is from Pangasinan. I, I understand Pangasinan, but I, I look for uh, their words. They write in Ilocano. And uh, for Pampango, I mean, there used to be like during the pre-war period, a lot of Pampango writers like Soto even, no? but uh, I haven't heard from them. Of course, Juliet Maliare uh, has workshops also, but the, the thing is we don't get to learn about them. No? And because the, the languages are so different, we don't meet them in workshops. It's not the same as the Cebuano Visayan uh, and Hiligayon Visayan and Warai Visayan because we still understand one another. We can get together. But these other languages are very far. Um, when I was in Iligan, one, one workshop in Iligan because I'm a regular panelist there, we had uh, Muslim. Now, of course, we cannot understand Muslim, no? but at least we got <laughs> we get to listen to them and uh, they should have been translated, I think. And uh, we had, uh, what do you call this Spanish Creole there? Chabacano. 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 And uh, Tony Enriquez was still alive. He was in that panel. And he's from, yeah. We, we could understand, you know, the Spanish bit, but uh, it's, it's uh, dif different, really. I've been I've been thinking of uh, children in Cebuano literature, and uh, to, to balance that, old people. <laughs> I have done women already, and somebody is doing gays. No, see, is it Francis? I say Francis. But uh, Wila has a project on children's literature. We, uh, I have these folk tales. You remember, 1975 was asked by Russell to collect the folk tales. So the writers of Wila 
are adapting them into more, you know, more child-friendly versions, like more dialogue and then illustrations. We're still looking for funding. <laughs> we have uh, we have prepared about ten already. So we we uh, conceive of it as a series. That you have, parang sa ka ng kaalmario bitaw nga group adarna like small uh, booklets, mm -hmm. illustrations. Yeah. I don't know when that will be published, but I did the editing because they wanted me, or I asked, I told them I have to put some stresses there because it it's it makes a difference if you say basa and basa <laughs> and if these are children, you know, starting to learn the language, they have to know the correct pronunciation. So we hope we'll see that soon. Uh -huh. yeah, hopefully next year. Uh, one last question, Doc. I'd, I'd like to ask about. Um, the state of um, publishing here in Cebu, writers, like how would writers get published or what's the state of... Um yeah, in, in my case, like in my friend's case, we, uh, we ask an organization no, to carry the, it, the book as a project, but we stand for it. Oh. Mm. So it's, it's a... Like about Baha, Bathala, they, they take care of... Uh, did I mention this already sometime? They take care of layouting and uh, communicating with uh, ISB for ISBN and they arrange uh, printing. But that's all they do. We, we uh, pay for the printing. Why do you think it's like that? Is it the readership? Or? I don't know. Uh, for, for literature maybe. But like the, the USC Press is for academic only, although it has uh, published some literary uh, books. And uh, it's not selling very well. Maybe it's even selling more in Manila than here. So why does not like to, to buy books? Except for Charles. <laughs> why not? I don't know. Like uh, we are we are we're in a group and one of us will buy this and another will buy another one, we just swap. But there is a book swap uh, culture here. In fact there is a group called Book Swap. <laughs> it's headed by Chapi Pyramidi. So what about selling these books? Like, um, where are the usual places? Or I know my books are, uh, if they're published by USC Press and they have a display room, but uh, in Manila, I, I don't, we, we seldom go to national because they, they ask for 40%, you know, patung and grabby and, and then you have to open a bank account and like that. So I just go directly to La Solidaridad, La Solidaridad. <laughs> I guess Frankie is there, and we know each other, and uh, also Cesar was in charge of books. But you know, here in Cebu, we have at least two uh, outlets. One is, but but you know, the Patong uh, Casa Gorordo. They have a boutique there, Casa Gorordo, and they display our books there. Um, and the other one is Palm Grass Hotel, which is called a heritage hotel, and uh, they have, uh, you know. Uh, Instead of the menu for food, they also have a menu for books, for some one books there that you can look at. <laughs> so what do you think happens to these writers who um, they write, but uh, they, they, they can't publish because they can't afford to publish their own books? What happens to their, their writings or how do they get to disseminate and share their writings? There, there is always, uh, you know, like for poetry, you have poetry readings mm -hmm. and cyberspace. They have blogs. They post their their works there, even stories. Are Are you specific with that, Doc? Like seeing, um, like into like the whole publishing process of your books? Are you actively involved? In uh, you know what? Um, I think the writer's business is just to write. Somebody else should do the marketing mm -hmm. and publishing. It's too much to expect with a writer. Not to pump the ladala. Ang libro o bilik kayo. No kana man. The young Cebuan writers are they active or aggressive in the, in the connection? Special when they succeed. Uh, they join. They they have writers groups mm -hmm. so they can uh, now pitch in. You know, they, rather than just one spending for the publication. Yes. I mean, in Hawaii, there's a resurgence of uh, Ilocano writing English or writing English. Not resurgence, so it's been there. I was, I, I taught there in 1988. Oh, it is the only uh, university where you have an Ilocano program, the whole world. Oh, it's only there. What about in Cebuano? 
Ah, uh, wala. Well, of course, uh, it's true that uh, there were more Cebuanos before than mm -hmm. then, then the things changed because of these uh, strikes uh, in oh, Hanapepe. Yeah. And so the sugar planters uh, would prefer Ilocanos mm -hmm. to either Tagalog or Cebuanos mm -hmm. because they, they would strike. Well, they, <laughs> the, 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 the Cebuanos would say, uh, give us a raise, you know, they only were paid one dollar, mm -hmm. dollar a day. Uh, yeah, and but Ilocano said, we can do it for 80, mm -hmm. <laughs> 80 oh, cents. No, so oh, so. so mm. <laughs> but when I was, I was there, of course, I thought it's like that. Mm -hmm. Oh, just one. Uh, uh, kami ni Resil exchange kami. So uh, after, there were three of us. One was in business and then I think I went first and then the other one in business and then Resil came third. What about the Cebuano based in the U.S. or abroad, writing in Cebuano? Oh yeah, like Cora is there in L.A., Adonis is in Ohio, uh, Mike is in, I think, in Kansas. And uh, my, the, the writers of Wila who, are, who have <laughs> married, uh, you know, Americans, they are still writing there. And some, they, they contribute to our anthologies and sometimes they join the Palanca. Mm. I, I was in UCLA when uh, Cecilia launched uh, a, book, a collection of essays by, uh, by Filipinos from different parts of the Philippines, but it was in English. Yeah. And of course, she does not write in Cebuano, she writes in English. I have uh, stopped reading. <laughs> now I have other things to do, but uh, like taking care of my grandchildren, <laughs> taking care of my husband. Um, yeah, when 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 my uh, my friends give me you no know, books, like I'm fond of Tracy Chevalier, for example, okay. and then uh, Anand Hati, <laughs> Roy. Would you like your uncle to become a writer in the future? Like you? It's a matter of like like <laughs> my daughter is already writing. Yeah, but but she's into research. She's taking a doctorate in the University of South Wales. Sydney. In fact, I'm going there, right? yes. <laughs> going to miss two classes here. But she's coming here to finish her research and then I'm going there to take care of my apples. <laughs> I need it, they, they all happen. When I was studying my doctoral, I have two small children. One was with my mother and the other was with my mother-in-law. <laughs> and we will meet every weekend in Argo. So my Eldest would be from the city, would go there, and then, and and then my second would be in an Argo, so we would meet there every weekend. For how many years? Three years. years. Babaying nagatubang sa salamin. Matud pa ni Don Pablo Picasso ang kahulugan sa iyang mga dibuho sama at tong babaeng nagatubang sa salamin. Wala sa iyang hunahuna. Dihang gisugdan ni Agbadlis ang nagahibat ni Ining Naong. Sunod sa pagbati ang tanday, ang tandi ay sa lain-laing bulok. Dili mahubit sa sugid ang panagway ni Ini. Nganong ang pikas mataga takilid o ang aninag sa salamin sukwahi. Maong ayaw na lang pagpangutana nga nung walay purma kining balaka. Nagsugod ko sa walay kulokatulog. Namasin kundiha sa pagkuris-kuris. Makita ang lintunganay sa panulat. Nagatubang ko karon sa osasab kasalamin. Kahit balon ako nga nung nabali ang tanan. Nga nung dili matusok ang naglawig na kahulugan. Sa pagtungtong na ako, 58. Alang kang rine sa leap year. Na ay daghan dihang naglumpayat, pananglitan. Ang ulan sa sandayong, ang liso sa bayanan, ang iro nga nagduwa-duwa, ang mananaog sa lumba, ang naghikog diha sa taytayan. Si Inday nga maupay pagkadawat og sulat ni Undo, ug ang kilat nung silaw, gika ni Budha. Makutlo sa gikan sa mga basahon, adunay duroha. Ang baki ni Basyo, mamilukso, human sa dakong kahilong, diha sa dakong linaw. 
nagpasiplat sa kalunhaong nakapulpog sa tubigong salamin. Unya, naasa di ay si Sleeping Beauty, nga nahaiging pagbangon ang iyang mga ngabil ug mata na pukaw tungod sa anino sa usak kamalamatong haluk. Apan labaw sa tanan, human sa hamubong hulaw, ang pinitik sa akong kasing-kasing nagkadagma-dagma. Kay may balangaw ang imong mga mata. Bisan karon, labina karon. Kausa doon ay miingon si Longfellow Bakanto na sa matag kinabuhi may ulan nga bubundak. Nakahuna-huna kaya siya sa mga ulan nga makalunos, makalumus sa tabunok nga bakilid o makaanon sa mga patay nga ito sa dagat. O nakahandura o basiyag ulan nga murag asido kanang makalubag sa bukog o gat kalag makapaslot sa bisag unsang bulok nga panit. Tingalig iyang kipasabot maura ang irog iring nga ulan nga mupaak o mupaghot nga ito sa kinaham nga damgo. Atong ipakita niya karon pipila ka talanaon sama sa lagong nga suba. Kung makaingon hinoon kita nga sa matag ulan may kinabuhi nga matagak. Mga Pinoy sa Chicago, 2007. Ang trend sa Chicago, muhatod sa manakay, temprano bisag asa sila gusto mo adto. Tingtog na ako adto sa 2007, diin ang Pinay, may bukhad o payong pagsagang sa niebe sa istasyon sa Kimball, diin ihap na ko pulo kaparisan sa mata nga bulok lutong tabunon, o silang pulo, pulos isputing naghulat kanu sa sa tren makalulan dalang kalupo gloves og dilana nga mga parka padulong ko atog party sa mga tigbantay ug tigulang pagabot nako mga lalaki nagagikik bahin sa Viagra ilang mga asawa kadukok sa may karaoke nanganta ang dangling nga bolawanong aryo sa taga Mandawi mitabyog samtang nagtudlo siya paglutog biko US style may magtiayong miabot na wahi hapit muhulugi sa birhin sa Patima, kansang groto ilang nabundol. May mitimbaya sa Outstanding Lady of the Midwest, na may gipaila ilang nars na bagong abot gikan sa Dumaguete. Kinsa puwerteng katingala nga diay sa labat, kamunggay o gusok gidalit na sa kapetid store, frozen, pakunong na palit. Ang irong si Humba, gihisterectomy kay Balomog pila. Ingon ni Ben, bana sa nars, dos mil dolyares ra. Samtay naglata, naglantaw ko sa mga nakadaog sa Oscar sa TV. Ang pakli-pakli kong magasin nga may webcam pa installment. Kay mga musta na ko sa amo diin may gibiyaan nga baby mo kamang na kayha in town Sharon. Mga hidlaw kasing-kasing. Buot mo kaog pansit og kaldereta kana kon pagluto makahigayon. Kay baya ilang mga amo mga strikto bisag himat yun. Human sa party, moderetso ra sila sa mga binantayan, kansang mga anak na tingob o palit o adult diaper. Na, sayo mong uli, matud ko. Katingalig, masayop niya mong tuplok sa maintenance sa inyong pasyente. Dili na yun mo makapadayog trabaho mag TNT. Dili na mo makapadalag spam o lipstick na 99 cents. Dili na mo makapanghambog na mag-atuan sa Disney. Dito, atuon niya inyong mga anak magdulag novel the snow bisag wala sila snowman thank you